All right, so if you're a high school, college, or university student, and you're looking to pick up a laptop for 2024, then the new M3 MacBook Air might be your best bet. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys my honest thoughts on the baseline version of this laptop, which in my opinion is pound for pound the best laptop you can get on the market. Trust me, I've been a student before and I know the struggle financially. So if you only have like a $1,200 budget to spend, the M3 MacBook Air is the ideal laptop to get. But there are a few caveats which we'll talk about in this video. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and this is the base version of the new M3 MacBook Air. So what do you get with the base variant? Well, you get 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, an 8-core CPU and an 8-core GPU. Now, the specs might not be the greatest, but you have to understand this is a MacBook and it does run very efficiently thanks to the new M3 chip and a newly redesigned GPU, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. So the specs don't tell the entire story with this laptop. I've been using this laptop for a bit over two weeks now and I gotta say it's impressed me. What you have to know is I haven't used a MacBook Air since the Intel i5 days so it's been quite a while. The complete redesign of the MacBook Air has really impressed me. The trackpad is incredible. It's very well optimized for navigating macOS. It's very responsive to your clicks. No issues on that front. Now to my surprise the keyboard is also very impressive. What I don't like though is this glaring notch over here. It doesn't interfere with your workflow when you're working in full screen mode but it also essentially serves no purpose. It's not like Dynamic Island on the iPhone where the cutout is actually very useful. This is just a weird design change. It's more so a marketing ploy than a practicality change. I mean some people may appreciate the notch but it's really not for me. I think as a student what's critical is you want a keyboard that you're comfortable typing with for long periods of time. The more efficient you are at typing on a keyboard the better your workflow is going to be. With the keyboard on the M3 MacBook Air the layout is fantastic. There is some really good tactile feedback. I find myself typing typing a lot faster and making a lot less mistakes. Efficiency is key for students, especially if you're like me and you're scrambling the night before to type up an entire lab report in just two hours. Something else you'll also appreciate about this laptop is just how silent it is. The Air features a silent fanless design. So if you're in a library, a cafe, wherever it may be, and you're really pushing this thing hard, the M3 Air will remain relatively silent. The 13 inch MacBook Air does a relatively good job of bringing together performance and flexibility. And what I mean by that is not only is this a very good performance laptop but Apple also nailed this form factor. I mean just look at this thing. It's extremely lightweight thin and portable. All very important factors when you're a student considering a laptop. Everyone and their grandma is really upset that the baseline variant of this laptop only comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM. People are saying that in 2024 the baseline version should come with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. And while I do agree with the premise, I will say though after using this laptop consistently on a daily basis for the past two weeks, I gotta disagree. Apple has done a fantastic job with the RAM management. The processing speeds are more than good enough with 8 gigabytes of RAM. I even tried editing some video on this thing and the processing was fairly quick. A 5 minute 4K video took about only 4 or 5 minutes to render. Not too bad at all. However, depending on how you use your laptop, the storage option of 256 gigabytes might not be enough for some of you. But 256 gigabytes is enough for me. That's because I love keeping my laptops clutter free so a lot of my stuff is stored in the cloud. I rarely ever do game on my laptops and I do heavily rely on external SSDs. So if you're looking for a good external SSD, the one that's actually worth your money then check the description below because I hunted down some really good deals for you guys that I'm pretty sure you guys will appreciate. If you guys are enjoying this video and you would like to see more of my content then of course drop a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. That would help me out a lot more than you guys know and I also do plan on making a one month and a three month review on this laptop so stay tuned for all of that. More than the specs, more than choosing a color, one of the toughest decisions you will face when it comes to buying the M3 Air is the screen size. Deciding between the 13 inch Air and the 15 inch air is a tough call for most people. But I do recommend the 13 inch for at least 98% of people out there. Hear me out. This display actually comes in at 13.6 inches. It's an LED backlit display with IPS technology sporting a 2560 by 1664 resolution at 224 pixels per inch. In person, this display is terrific. More than good enough to get by. The brightness also goes up to 500 nits, which is more than good enough in almost any indoor lighting environments. 13.6 inch 
inch is is honestly the ideal size, especially if you are trekking around campus all day with this thing in your hand. It only weighs 2.7 pounds, which in my opinion is the perfect balance between comfort and portability. You have a more than big enough screen for in-person school tasks, and at home, you can actually dock this to an external display. Speaking of external displays, the M3 MacBook Air now supports a dual monitor setup, but it only works if the laptop is closed, which shouldn't be an issue for most people. If you are using an external monitor, I'm going to already assume you have an external mouse and a keyboard. If you don't and you're looking to get a killer combo, then I do recommend the infamous Logitech MX Master 3 and the Newfie Halo 96 keyboard. One of the best keyboard mouse combos around. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description below along with the discount code for the keyboard. The keyboard is definitely worth the pickup. Now let's talk about specs for a second with the base M3 Air. So the M3 chipset this year is 60% faster than the M1 chipset and now it does have AI capability. Here's what matters though. The GPU is redesigned this year for optimizing GPU memory allocation and utilization. So the GPU will actually adapt to different tasks. This not only helps the graphic performance, but also helps the battery efficiency. And this has actually held up true in my testing throughout the past two weeks. Apple says the M3 Air has the same 18 hour battery life like the previous iterations, but the efficiency of the battery is now a lot better. If you're just using this laptop throughout the day to take Zoom calls, jot down notes in class, watch a few shows, write essays and lab reports, then you're going to get more than 18 hours of battery life. So the efficiency of the M3 Air is now a lot better, which is what really matters for a lot of students out there. However, if you're more of a power user who edits video, uses GPU intensive apps like Blender and After Effects, then the battery life will take a significant hit. I even tried gaming on the M3 Air and surprisingly it was pretty good. I got some pretty good FPS playing League of Legends, mostly playing Jinx in mid lane, don't do that guys, and on medium quality, the game was actually playable. If you are struggling to choose between the M2 or the M3 Air, I gotta say spend the extra 100 bucks and get the M3. You'll get more years of software support, the GPU along with the M3 chip is much more efficient this year, so that extra 100 bucks to me is definitely worth it. Here's what the M3 MacBook Air checks off for me as a student. Extremely portable, check. Extremely lightweight, check. Good battery life, three-fourths of a check. A great display, check. A good speaker system, check. A great keyboard, check. A good trackpad, check. A good webcam, negative check. Good value for price, check. The webcam is alright. It's still a 1080p camera and you do look like a potato in most scenarios. So either invest in a webcam or just settle for less. Here's what you are missing though. You are missing an SD card slot important for those of you who make content online. Whenever I want to transfer large files, I do have to use an external hub such as this one, which can be quite annoying every now and then. But for those of you who are focused on your studies and you could care less about an SD card slot, with the M3 MacBook Air, you already have all the necessary parts to get you through the school year. The M3 MacBook Air nails every everything you want as a student in a laptop. In my testing, the baseline version is more than enough for everyday tasks. Any Microsoft Office app runs incredibly smooth on this laptop. It's actually quite decent for some light gaming. You can also comfortably watch content on this thing in the comfort of your bed or couch. The only negative I would say is this notch right here, and the battery life can drain pretty quickly if you're doing some pretty GPU intensive tasks. Otherwise, if you can't afford it, then do buy it. You will absolutely love it. Just make sure to buy it in this midnight black colorway. I really do love the color minus the fingerprints, although the new anodized code does help with that. You can also choose from space gray, silver, or starlight, but let me know what color is your favorite down in the comments below. To me, nothing beats this midnight colorway. It just looks so sleek in all sorts of lighting conditions. As always, thank you so much for watching. Drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below if you made it to the end of this video. I would love to know who my true supporters are. And of course, don't forget to flex with your M3 MacBook tech.